Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of the Naked Audio tutorial series. This is Yong from SG Audio Hive. If you are here, most probably you have thought of starting out on DIYing your own cables, uh, repairs, and uh, even building your own custom IEMs, but are very not sure where to start. Um, we will be showing you from the start all the way to the end, uh, which is uh, building custom jobs, uh, custom IEMs in this whole tutorial series. So here in episode 1, we have compiled a comprehensive list uh, with links to Amazon and AliExpress uh, on the tools that you will require and we will be elaborating on them. Uh, this is a very long video, so uh, do take note. Okay, I've included a long list uh, in the Excel sheet form uh, down in the description. So this list contains uh, all of the tools and brands uh, that uh, we are familiar or we can actually recommend to you uh, to, to, to get uh, the tools from or to, to, to get that particular item. So the links are from Amazon and AliExpress affiliates, uh, meaning we will earn a small commission if you decided to click and uh, check out the items from there. Um, all our contents are self-funded, so this is one way you can show us uh, some support. But of course you don't have to. Uh, we will be able to come up with more and more better quality video contents like this uh, if we get enough support. Okay, so as we know, there are many tools and equipment required to perform any form of DIY work. Okay, be it a simple audio jack repair, a replacement all the way to building your own custom IEM. There are specific tools for specific uh, users. You might already own some of these tools uh, at home, so you are able to start right away. But uh, if you don't uh, have, here is a list of recommended tools that uh, you might want to consider getting. I personally started out uh, repairing IEMs and uh, doing all these uh, building cables and repairing headphones, building IEMs. Um, but at the start, we only have uh, just a 35 watt generic uh, soldering pen, um, one blue tag and uh, scissors, pliers and th th that's all I have. So while well, having this is uh, not recommended, they are sufficient uh, to start DIY work as soon as possible. So do th there is a bare minimum list uh, also in the description uh, is what you need, the bare minimum that you need uh, to start out your DIY, DIY journey, you can refer to that. So in this video, we'll be going through the few categories uh, at below, uh, which is uh, work desk and storage, stationaries, soldering, clamp and assistive tools, cutting tools, working and testing tools, adhesive and finishing, and uh, finally the conclusion. To be able to do any form of work, you must have a work desk. So uh, a table is sufficient. And the below are not necessary, but uh, they are good to have uh, to, mean to make sure that you have a clean and tidy work area. Okay, so during craft work, there is a lot of marking, gluing, and uh, cutting involved. So we might want not want to damage the tabletop as much as possible. So if you do have a cutting mat, something like this, a cutting mat is uh, quite recommended to keep your work desk uh, free from scratches. And also, uh, they are easily replaceable and not very expensive. Also, a glass tabletop is very useful if you have uh, suction-mounted tools those that are uh, mount on glass uh, on the windows and such uh, there are clamps that comes into in, in this form so uh, we, we'll go through them in, in the list and also below okay so the next set of items that uh, we recommend you to get uh, is a uh, it's like a divider tray so this is something that uh, goes into your drawer uh, and you, you keep your drawer organized into sections so you can use it in a poor drawer or best uh, way I find to use uh, is to Use them inside a, you know, those keyboard uh, drawer for your computer table. So you can lay them down there and uh, you can get your things organized. So if you have a large tray and a pull-out drawer, uh, a pull-out keyboard uh, drawer, you can uh, use it to easily collect uh, all your dust. You can sweep them all in uh, from the tabletop into this, uh, this trash collector and just throw them away easily. And one particular way I really love to use this uh, is to uh, modify them into a... Uh, a, a tray combo uh, with uh, LED lighting for continuity testing and also um, we have uh, a, a, a com compartment where you put all your tools and all your parts required for the project and uh, all in one once you're done with the project all the trash go there and we can just throw it away uh, clean and easy so we will be doing a video tutorial uh, soon uh, to show you how to build your own set Okay, I believe you all have seen uh, a lot of these uh, outside these are uh, multi-compartment jewelry or accessory sorting box they are particularly useful because uh, we have so much uh, small items that we want to keep them together and not mix up and of course uh, easy access. So you can get multiple of these boxes, uh, they can stack up nicely uh, 
quite neat and tidy and uh, make your life a lot easier. If you find a correct size uh, of this kind of box, uh, you might even be able to use them to store your cables or IEMs. Okay, so rubbish bin, uh, we don't have to explain about that. As with most work, we will need some stationaries to start. So these are some of the items that you most likely have at home. Permanent oil-based markers, they are cheap and they come in a lot of colours. Okay, not only can they be used to write, uh, but they can also be used to colour and label wires, which is uh, quite important. And I strongly recommend you to mark and label your wires before you break them. Uh, that is where you still know where is your left channel and right channel. So before you break them, uh, mark them out and break. So after finished braiding, you do not need to check them again through a continuity tester, so you save a lot of time. Okay, so the standard color that I use is uh, R plus equals to red color, L plus is blue, L minus black, and uh, the last one we are not going to color, the R minus we are not going to color it because uh, we only have four, four channels. Of course, you can color them if you want to, um, but for single-ended cable, uh, the two ground wire does not need to be colored. Uh, this is for a four-wire cable, so the red color will be the right channel, blue color will be the left channel. Colored paint markers, uh, they are acrylic based, uh, they are excellent for colouring on products. So when they are dried, they can be sanded smooth and also uh, lacquered over without smudging because uh, it is acrylic and they are inert. So this is super useful when you are doing a repair and there is some colour difference that you want to cover up, you want to, to make it more even or uh, you, you, want, you want to make the whole thing black or anything. So this is where it comes in very handy. One of the most essential things uh, we will need is the measurements. So uh, a measuring tip or a ruler is uh, good enough, uh, you need a minimum of uh, 1.5 meters. Uh, of course, you can, you can do a double measurement and uh, that's alright. So, one of the best uh, way that uh, we can utilize this is to stick a piece of measurement tape onto the edge of a table. So, in that way, you can have a uh, quick access anytime you want. Any form of soldering work will definitely require soldering tools. Apart from a set of good soldering iron and a solder, there are a number of additional tools uh, below uh, which are very useful once you acquire them. The soldering iron is the most important tool in DIY. So uh, we recommend you start off with a good set of soldering iron. You do not, do not need to be the top of the line but a good set will do. And they usually come with uh, the soldering stand and cleaner already included so you don't have to buy additional stuff uh, to make it all work. They do have an uh, adjustable temperature setting and uh, interchangeable soldering tips and sometimes even a hot air uh, solder in attached. If you have used a proper soldering station before, you will understand why they are so expensive because they are really good. You can set a uh, different temperature for different kind of jobs uh, like soldering regular wires, uh, lead wires or coated wires, components or IEM drivers and their tips can be changed out uh, to do different kind of soldering or when they wear out, you can change it to a new tip. But if you do not have enough budget, it is okay to just use a simple soldering pan uh, rated at 30 to 45 watts. Uh, I, I've been using, I've, I've used that for 7 years without issue, uh, that is prior to doing this uh, full time and everything. So yeah, the key is to maintain the soldering tip properly and uh, of course if you are using that, you have to buy your own stand. I mean, uh, it's for safety because uh, you need some, somewhere to rest the hot iron. So another important component for soldering is the solder itself. So I would recommend uh, you all can start with an off-the-shelf uh, rosin core solder, uh, 8 millimeters to 10 millimeters. Uh, these are the best thickness to use uh, at the start. There are leaded solder and unleaded solder, so with the leaded solder lasting uh, usually longer. But uh, of course, uh, due to health concern and the effects of lead exposure, we recommend you to go for a ROS certified uh, unleaded solder like the Castor 44. Okay, of course there are also silver, uh, gold and uh, even sometimes platinum uh, solder around. Uh, I don't recommend you to go into them so early on in your journey but uh, if you have access to them, uh, this is something to play with. We will try to cover the topic of solder and their effects uh, in another video next time. Okay, the maintenance aspect of DIY is also very important. A uh, good maintenance habit can make a soldering iron tip last a lot longer. And also, uh, when you have old solder on the on the iron tip itself, uh, they actually burn off all the flux and everything, so the solder will not flow, and uh, we, we have to clean it off to apply new solder. Also, sometimes you'll find your soldering tip uh, getting oxidized, so you, we want to clean them quite often. Okay, 
one key danger of uh, soldering, uh, apart from getting yourself burnt, is inhaling the solder smoke. Okay. A film extractor can draw the film away from your face, and the activated carbon filter uh, can actually remove the odor, uh, but the harmful micron thick particles are still present. So we don't recommend you to do a lot of soldering work uh, in an enclosed area, especially in your own room, because uh, this dust they can settle on your walls, on your table, on your bed sheet uh, where you sleep, and they can get into your system through your lungs or through ingesting them very easily and they'll cause a lot of problems for your body. I mean, how we know that? <laughs> Don't ask me. Yeah, I cannot before. So if you want to go hardcore, uh, you can install a ventilator right in front of your work table. I, I mean, I'm located right at the window. Uh, I can install a ventilator fan here to draw all the things outside. So finally, we'll need some heating tools like the hot air gun and a uh, torch lighter uh, to shrink your heat shrink and to soften glues of uh, some IEMs or some headphone drivers or something that you want to remove. And so if you want to use these uh, tools, you have to use them also in a well-ventilated area. As some of this glue and uh, plastic that you're heating on, they release some dangerous fumes also. Okay, so now you have your soldering station set up. What do you need next will be your tools and equipment to help you hold things, to help you clamp down things uh, for you to make your work easier. So in most cases, uh, a piece of blue tech is uh, sufficient to do most of your work already. But uh, we still recommend you to get some proper mounting tools uh, to make a lot of jobs easier. So these are our list. I actually did not realize that blue tech is not so commonly known all over the world uh, until I started doing YouTube and people started to ask me this question repeatedly. So uh, we grew up with it. Uh, it's used to mount papers onto walls, uh, mount photo anywhere. So it's like a mounting. It's a, it's, a, it's a sticky adhesive that you stick on the wall to get something to stick. Yeah, So we can use it, uh, we can shape it to any form. We can use any amount, you can use uh, even so big uh, just to mount something. Uh, these, are very, these are very versatile and you can move them around very easily. Binder clips or paper clips. They can be used to clip your wires uh, to prepare them for braiding and also to clip them uh, once you stop braiding. Uh, you don't want, don't want the braids to come undone, so you can clip at the end. So these are quite useful. It's not, it's not important, but these are quite useful to have. So a set of uh, helping hand is basically a tool that uh, has clips that helps you hold your thing. So these are very, very useful when you need to hold multiple stuff. Actually, when you need to do soldering work, you need your left hand to hold and fit your solder, and you need the right hand to hold the soldering iron. So you need something to hold on to the the jack or whatever you are working on. So one way is to use a helping hand. Having a more clamping vise, uh, it actually helps you to do uh, more intricate works and more difficult works. Okay, like for example, if you have a vise like this that clips, clips on the table, you can do a lot of heavy drilling and sawing work uh, on your product. And also uh, you can even grind down materials using this as a clamp. But they are not essential. There are also a variety of these uh, clamps uh, that comes with a suction base. So they are very easy to install and remove uh, to put away. And also uh, you can bring them around and uh, work at different places. So I've been using my tenor vise for quite a few years. I received this as a gift and uh, I use them almost every day. So needles, sewing needles, the, the one they use for sewing. These uh, are mainly used for application of glue. <laughs> I even have a, a, a set holder for needles. So the way that we apply glue is to pour out some of the glue and uh, use a needle to dip and uh, apply it on the surface. Leather and gripping cloth are generally used as an insulator or to provide extra grips. Okay, a majority of work will require some form of cutting. Okay, while a regular pair of scissors uh, can bring you a long way, there are actually some more cutting tools we are essential, especially for repair and modification work. Below us, everything we could recommend you to work towards having. So craft knife uh, or pen knife here, uh, they are very useful in uh, trimming and cutting stuff but they can also be heated up and used as a heated uh, knife for glue removal and you can slip them because of the, the, the blades are so thin, you can slip them into part lines of uh, IEMs and use it as a leverage uh, to open up the shell. You can even use these uh, pen knife blades to open up custom IEM face plate for repair. So I don't think I need to talk much about scissors. They are always used to cut uh, wires or heat shrinks. Uh, shears, on the other hand, they are heavy duty scissors. So um, we can use them to cut or trim uh, thinner plastics. 
all cabling jobs uh, will definitely require a uh, wire stripper. So uh, in our cases, uh, we have to use uh, most commonly 22 AWG all the way to 32 AWG. Uh, so do get a pair that uh, covers this range of uh, gauge. Okay. Take note, if you are getting the Chinese made uh, wire strippers, uh, make sure that the dimension is correct. Uh, they may write 22 AWG, but the dimension might not fit. It might be a lot smaller, like for example 26 AWG. So do take note and check it out first. Wire cutters are basically uh, very very heavy duty scissors because they are made from uh, carbon steel instead of uh, stainless steel. You can cut through very thick materials uh, with minimal damage to the blade uh, unlike a scissors. I mean, once you cut through the thick material, uh, it's gone. Okay, the ultimate cutting tool uh, is a rotary tool. Uh, these are the most important tool if you want to do uh, serious work on DIY or making custom IEMs. You need a lot of cutting work through uh, grinding. Uh, through this tool, there's a lot of different tool heads uh, and a lot of different applications for this. If you want to get it, uh, go ahead. This is uh, one of the most important tools uh, for DIY. If you are looking to buy a rotary tool, I would recommend you look at the uh, Dremel 8220, the wireless one. These are very useful as you can bring them around and uh, you can work outside because uh, rotary work creates a lot of dust. Okay, so we have gone through a lot of tools and we are already capable of building stuff, uh, making our own cables or repairing stuff. But here is a list of uh, extra tools that may even aid you further. So pliers are very useful. Uh, you can use them to grip or clamp something. Uh, they are often used together with uh, some protection and grip like a leather cloth or a grip gripping cloth um, because uh, they, can, they have to protect the work piece from scratches. Doing DIY, you will often find yourself working on very small parts or very small wires. Uh, you do not want to use your bare hands to solder them, I mean to hold them or soldering because you can get very hot. So a pair of tweezers uh, is very helpful. Uh, make sure to get the non-magnetized uh, ESD safe tweezers uh, because uh, a lot of headphone drivers, uh, they are actually magnets. I mean, they, they are made of magnets. So you do not want to, to have your things slipping away. Arches are uh, quite important because uh, a lot of time we have to pry open IEMs or headphones. Uh, so these are essential and they help to make the opening process, uh, the cracking down process of the IEM and headphone very easy. When working on headphones, uh, definitely you will see a lot of screw. So you have to uh, do the disassembly with a screw. Uh, I recommend you get a full screwdriver set because uh, sometimes the Philips and flat screwdriver is not enough. A bulb tester and a multimeter can help you do uh, contact tracing uh, to check if uh, there's a short circuit and much more. So um, you do not need a multimeter if you are just doing uh, cabling work. Uh, of course, it's recommended to get one. So when the project is done, the most important thing to do uh, is to perform a full test, a full stereo test, a balance test, polarity and stress test. So you will need to hook them up to a player, uh, either your laptop, your player, your phone or desktop amp and also your headphone or your IEMs. Okay, but basically what you already have should be good enough for you because uh, most of you are doing this for your own requirement. Okay, so finally, uh, when you finish a product, it needs to be finished. So uh, you have either have to glue it, uh, to cast it, to color it or to lacquer it. So here are some of the things that uh, may assist the final steps and uh, finally helping you to create a well-made, uh, handmade product, a finished product, uh, either for your own enjoyment or to sell. The hot glue uh, is a very versatile form of FA assist. They can be used via the guns to mount drivers, uh, to mount things uh, uh, either temporarily or permanently, or to mount your cable hardware, your, uh, for example, your wide split, uh, to reinforce your cable joint, uh, soldering joint, uh, very often, uh, you'll find yourself using just the glue stick by itself. Super glue, uh, you should be familiar with this. Uh, they are very strong glue, uh, very fast. Uh, they dry upon contact. These are generally used to repair cracks uh, in IEMs uh, to, to glue up parts together. So the way to use super glue uh, here is to apply it through a needle. So you pour it somewhere, uh, you use a needle, dip it and use it to apply it. So you have seen uh, us use some epoxy putty before. So these are not the same as uh, what epoxy resin that you see people doing epoxy art. These are a form of very very permanent and strong adhesive. They are so strong that uh, once you leave them somewhere and you forget about it, uh, you are impos it's near impossible to strip them off without any damage to the surface. So there, there are epoxy glue and epoxy putty. So for epoxy glue, uh, they cure within 5 to 15 minutes of mixing. 
uh, they have a very short working time. Uh, they are very useful to to glue up something like uh, a broken headband. And uh, for epoxy party, they are they are much more versatile because uh, they can be shaped by hand uh, during the curing process. So uh, they have a working time of about thirty minutes. So you can mix them up and you can mold them into the shape you want. Let it cure yeah, for about uh, three to six hours, and you can sand them and uh, shape them even further. And they are a solid piece to work with. UV resin work. They are usually used to fill in cracks, uh, repair cracks, uh, reinforce joints, uh, and making custom product like IEM shelves and custom IEMs. In the future, I'll be going through uh, UV craft uh, for audio application and uh, from there, I uh, will introduce you to uh, custom IEM building. So a lot of time uh, after the work is finished, uh, we need to clean it up. So uh, we have a lot of cleaning options, rubbing alcohol, ronsono fluid, uh, turpentine and contact cleaner. These, these are quite uh, useful if you have them. Uh, you do not necessarily need every one of them. Uh, ronsono oil, Ronsonal fluid, a uh, lighter fluid is uh, sufficient enough for most uh, applications. So in conclusion, uh, I believe uh, having a good set of tools is uh, totally different from having a complete set of tools because there are so many things you will encounter during your DIY journey that uh, you want to be prepared for. All the tools listed above uh, and all those in the list, uh, they are recommended but not compulsory. Each of you will eventually start to have your own habit and style. That aside, you will still need to invest a lot of time in uh, building up your crafting, soldering and finishing skills. Um, the key is to get focused on the things you want to do in the future and, uh, and get better at your work. So we have come to the end of the first episode and we thank you so much for sticking all the way through. Uh, we will be doing uh, soldering basics uh, in episode 2, so do stay tuned for that. This will be an ongoing series. Uh, we are currently at the first episode. Uh, we hope to really go all the way through the end of DIY and we can start our discussion from there. So if you really like this video or you really want to support us, uh, do help us subscribe and like our videos. You can also follow us on Instagram and uh, like our Facebook page. They are all in the links below. So once again, thank you so much for watching. We hope you have learned something new uh, in this video and also in the subsequent videos in the future. We'll see you in the next episode.